the new Mid Journey external editor is out guys. Before we jump on in, I quickly have to mention this though. The external editor at the current moment is only available to subscribers who meet at least one of the following requirements. You have a yearly Mid Journey subscription, you have been subscribed to Mid Journey for at least 12 consecutive months without any interruptions, or you have generated more than 10,000 jobs in Mid Journey. With that said, let's now have a closer look at the new Mid Journey external editor. First to open up the new external editor, go to edit here in the left sidebar. You will then get to this interface right here. And the big news with this external editor now is that you can now actually upload your very own images and then edit these by clicking here on edit uploaded image. This can be any kind of image. This could be a personal photo that you've taken on your iPhone for example. It could be an image that you created in another software such as ideogram and so on and so forth. On top of that you could also go to explore here in the left sidebar and then go to whatever image you find here in your feed, click on it, then right click on the image, copy image URL, then you go back to edit, you click on edit from URL, then you insert that URL right here and click on OK. And just like that you imported an image from your mid journey feed into the editor. I'm going to upload my very own image now because this is what the new editor is all about. So I click here on edit uploaded image and I'm going to upload this very cool glass snail right here, which as you have probably noticed comes on a transparent background. So yes, you can also upload images with transparent background, which is actually really cool. So once we've opened that up, we see it here in our editor. There are a couple of cool things that we can do now. First of all, what I usually do first is I actually reduce the image scale right here to get me some more space. And now as the image is much smaller, we can generate a lot of cool stuff around our original image. If you would like to move your image around the canvas now, make sure that move resize here is selected and you can then freely move it around the canvas. So you can move it wherever you want within your image and then generate the other parts around it, which is super, super awesome. So I would like to have my snail around here in the image, I would say, like so. Then next on the left side here, we also have erase and restore. So if you would like to erase parts of your image and then generate something new in that place, you could use erase. If you erase too much, you can bring that back by using restore. So let us make our first generation now. In fact, I would like to place this glass snail in a dark type of forest. So let's try that. To do so, we just go to the prompt field here on top and let me input something like dark forest. And now let's generate our image. So I'll click here on submit edit. Oh my God, how cool is that? Everything blends in perfectly. Like the lighting is amazing. The colors are amazing. I just can't believe it. So what it actually did, it left our snail at the very same position that we placed it on our canvas before. And then it filled in all the rest based on our prompt here on top which was a very simple prompt after all. I just wrote dark forest. Incredible. The only thing that I actually don't like about this image is this ring that it created right here. However, this is very easy to remove. You can use something like Canva Pro, Photoshop, or even a free tool like photop.com to easily remove that. Or you could also try the erase function right here and then just brush over it and try to remove it like that. Maybe we'll give this a go as well. But now, as you surely know, whenever you generate something in Mid Journey, always four variations are created. So this is just one image out of four. So let's have a look at the other variations. And you can find these here in the upper right corner of the screen. So let's click on the second one. Yeah, this one is pretty cool as well, but it's a little bit too unrealistic for my taste. Even though, even though I have to admit this one is not very realistic either because I've never really seen a snail like this, have you? Anyway, let's have a look at the third image. Yeah, this one's nice as well, but still, I definitely prefer the first image so far. So let's have a look at the last one. Okay, not bad, but let's have a look at the first one again. And this one just blew my mind, I'm not gonna lie. So let's try this erase option here for a second because I'm really curious if we could also use it to actually just erase this. So let's click on erase here on the left side. I will just brush over this. And I'm just going to leave this prompt unaltered and click on submit edit again. So let's see what happens. It is now just going to generate variations for this very area right here, not for the whole image. That's really important to understand. And just like that, it perfectly removed that problem. Awesome. But please understand that probably the main purpose of erase is to actually erase something within your design and replacing it with something else rather than just erasing something. Now with this lovely image right here, we could do some more stuff. For example, we can further edit it by reducing the image scale here again and then we can generate around it here again to fill in the blank space on the canvas. On top of that, we can also choose a different aspect ratio right here and then fill in these blank spaces right here by simply generating again here on top. So if you would li just like to expand the dark forest, we would simply type dark forest here again and it would expand the forest. But we could also write something completely different to fill in these spaces. Let's try something else now though. I'm here in the explore panel and let me just see if I see some design that I particularly like. 
Actually, I kind of like this hand knit landscape here with this cute dog and this girl. So what we can do now is we click on the image, then we right click on it, copy the image URL, then we go to edit again here on the left side. We don't want to work with this one here anymore. So to open up a new editor window, you can go to new here in the top right corner of the screen. And this time we're going to click on edit from URL. I will simply input the URL that we just copied and then I click on OK. Now, once again, I'm going to reduce the image scale right here, probably something like that. And as you've probably noticed, we also have this suggest prompt button right here. So what this does is it actually gives you a prompt for this very image right here to describe it, which is very useful because in my case, for example, my English is not that great. So I'm having a hard time to really describe images like that. So we click here on suggest prompt and on top, we now get this description. The cool thing now is that we can use that for our generation because as I have just reduced the image scale here to 42%, we have a lot of blank space here now to fill in. And for that purpose, we can also use the very same prompt. So let's just click on submit edit and let's pray for a good result. And if you ask me, this is just absolutely perfect. There's virtually nothing in this image that I don't like. Everything looks perfectly hand knit. The style is nice. The colors are great. Just a great expansion of the image that we had to start with. Let's have a look at the other creations. This one's nice too. Yeah, that one's immaculate as well. Great. What else can you say? And now again, let's use the eraser tool right here. But this time let's use it in the way that we were probably supposed to. And that is by erasing something within our image and then replace it with something else. I would like to try to erase these clouds right here and then simply replace that with a hand knit sun. So I first brush over all the clouds. Then on top, I go to the prompt. I will just delete that and let's try a hand knit sun. Let's hit submit edit and see what happens. And boom, problem solved. Well, we still got a couple of clouds here, but I actually don't even mind because we now have an absolutely gorgeous sun here in the middle and I'm completely fine with that. If I wouldn't be here again, to remove these clouds would be pretty simple because the background here is actually very simple. So in Canva Pro, for example, you could use the magic eraser tool to easily erase these clouds or in Photoshop, you could use the remove tool. And as we've seen before, even with the erase option, you could probably remove these if wanted. Let's have a look at the other generations as well. And as always, you find them here in the upper right corner of the screen. Here's the second one, third one, no sun in that one, unfortunately. And the last one, lovely. To save an image that you created here in the editor, you can actually go to the lower left corner of the screen here and then either upscale it to the gallery or download it to your computer immediately. If you upscale it to the gallery, you simply click here and then you go to create right here in the left sidebar and you'll find your upscaled image right here. If you click on download image, it will immediately be downloaded to your computer. And here it is. Last but not least, we also have to talk about the retexture feature right here. But before we do so, we have to give this cat with the fish some actual background. So once again, here on the left side, we will introduce the image scale. Then I go to move resize right here. I move the cat down a little bit, something like that. And let's say this is a Japanese cat. And where is it? Probably at the fish market in Tokyo, Japan, right? So we will just input that right here. Fish market in Tokyo, Japan. And we hit submit edit. So let's see if we can save this poor cat. And look at that image, it's pretty amazing. The only big problem I can see off the bat is that it seems that our cat actually got an extra leg right here, which could be useful, but after all is not very realistic. So let's have a look at the other generations. Here as well, it looks like our cat got this extra leg or just an extra thick leg after all. So let's have a look at the other ones. Here finally we have a pretty good one. Mid Journey even added the missing fin here to our fish. Look at that here, this was kind of missing. And here we have that, amazing. However, it messed up the pause here a little bit. It kind of looks like a small hand now. But apart from that, I really like this image. And let's check out the last one now. <laughs> this, oh, this is... Oh my god, this one is pretty funny. Here we got the extra leg. We got this problem with the paw. We have a second cat. And then we also have this dude that kind of has this angry reaction because after all, the fish has been stolen. And then we have the usual mid-journey problem here with the hand, right? But all in all, still very amusing. I just went back to the second variation right here because overall, I think I like this one the best, even with the extra leg here considered. I would probably still work with an image like that and I would just edit these things out in Photoshop real quick. So let's have a look at the retexture feature. So we click on retexture here in the upper left corner of the screen and it reads, retexture will change the contents of the input image while trying to preserve the original structure. So let's try this. What about this image in watercolor style? Let's hit submit. And that's what we got now. The overall style is quite nice, but our cat kind of looks like an owl now, which is a bit funny after all. So let's check the other images. Not a big fan of this one, to be honest. This one is weird too. And no comment for this one. Let's try something else, maybe mosaic. And let's hope for better results. 
Yeah, this looks much more promising, to be honest. Yeah, this one is actually pretty cool. I kind of like what they did here. The style is great. The problem is just really the fish in the cat's hand. This is probably not something that Midjourney would expect, or I don't know what the problem is, but this is pretty hard to depict in Mosaic, I guess. Let's have a look at the other results. Yeah, okay, interesting. <laughs> this one's horrible, I guess you would agree. And let's just not talk about this one here, okay? What if we try to apply the retexture feature directly here on our image with transparent background? Maybe that would work better. Let's give it a try. So I will try woodblock style. And let's give it a go. Nice, the problem is just that we get this human-like hand right here. So what about the others? Yeah, not bad, we're getting there, I guess. No, ah, uh, no, not really. Hmm, not sure, not sure what to think about that one here. Well, as you can see, the retexture feature is not that easy to use, but it's definitely something worth exploring and experimenting with. Our image right here was probably a really difficult one to get to work. I would imagine that something much simpler would probably work much better with retexture. In any case, in the comments of this video, let me know what you think about this new mid-journey feature. There's one more thing that I would like to try real quick. First, let's add a background to this very image that I just uploaded to the external editor. The prompt that we're gonna use is an Asian woman in front of a Japanese temple. We click edit and here's what we got. Absolutely amazing. Look at that quality. What I would like to try now is to add some text right here. And let's try that by using the erase feature right here. So I click on it. I will just erase this part right here. And let's just keep it simple for the prompt right here. We're just going to write Japan. Please note that in Midjourney, whenever you want to create text, you have to add quotation marks. This is really important. Maybe it's still not gonna work, but if you don't put quotation marks at all, Midjourney apparently has no clue that you want to add text. So with that said, we click on Submit Edit right here, and let's wait for the result. Okay, this is kind of what I expected here. We don't get any text at all in our first image. Let's see the second one. Oh, we do have some text here, but it's obviously some Japanese kanji, and not really something in English, unfortunately. The same for the third one. And for the last one as well. Well, maybe the problem is that the background is very blurry, so it's hard to add some text. But my guess would simply be that Midjourney is messing this up because it has always been struggling really hard with text. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where Ideogram comes into play. Because Ideogram, in case you don't know, is yet another amazing image generation software. And Ideogram is actually amazing with text and text overlays. And by coincidence, just very recently, Ideogram also came out with a new update very similar to this Midjourney one right here. However, working with text, be it adding text or changing text in a design, Ideogram is just doing so much better than Midjourney currently. So if you would like to know more about Ideogram and especially Ideogram's latest update, then please make sure to watch the next video on this channel.